back, and that's what kind of thing. All over America, black ghettos exploded in rage and grief. Most devastating. Even the nation capital was feared. I decided to go out to schools and to talk to kids, to tell them not to ride and not to lose and not to jeopardize their future. And I guess a young boy about 12 looked me straight in the eye, which I never forgot, um, to tell me, lady, what future? She said to me, lady, what future? I ain't got no future. I ain't got nothing to lose. And I have spent the last 45 years trying to prove that boy's truth wrong. Mary Wright Edelman created the Children's Defense Fund to change the odds for all children. Today I am pursuing my master's degree in education administration at Florida International University. Thank you, Ms. Ellen. I was terribly shy, but Freedom Schools helped me to step out of my shell. Freedom Schools was the first place where I spoke publicly and expressed my views in open discussion with other students. My teachers made me feel as if what I had to say was valued. Year after year I went to Freedom Schools, I gained confidence and I learned to be a leader. It's a place for worship, reflection, and the study and pursuit of civil and human rights. Thousands of young people have trained there. It's part of the Children's Defense Fund's Freedom School. Organization dedicated to using the arts to spark peaceful dialogue and negotiations between opposing cultures. Please welcome Malik Kofi and Ulibar Dabi. <laughs> Children and collecting stories of the uninsured in my community. 
so thankful that 40 years later we're all alive to do the work necessary to pay homage to the life and legacy of Ms. Mary Wright Elderman. I'm so confident that in the next 40 years we really can end child poverty. I'm so confident that in the next 40 years we can talk about the struggle to protect that. mission says, a healthy start, a head start, a fair start, a safe start, and a moral start in life, and successful passage to adulthood with the help of caring families and communities. In my current work in National Public Schools as a high school counselor, it gives me endless examples of how the tentacles of poverty impact so many other facets of life. And many of these stories are heartbreaking. But many of them highlight the resilience of children and the life-changing impact that efforts like that of CDF can have on a young life. In my office, I have that CDF poster that I got that summer in D.C. so many years ago, and it has a CDF motto on it. Dear Lord, be good to me, the sea is so wide and my boat is so small. Who are the three young men you are about to meet? I can call them young men, because I clearly remember their earliest years. In a way, they grew up with CDF. They had a front row seat. Each has gone on to do important work. Please welcome Joshua, Jonah, and Ezra Edelman. Back in my senior year in college, this tenet became especially important, providing the clarity. Do something you love, and something that connects to your own sense of making the world better for others. I chose teaching. her reputation and CDF funds on a national rally for children in 1996. Organized in just five months, Stanford Children Day became the largest demonstration for children in American history. 300,000 people attended. And after those earnest, inspiring words from my brothers and frankly everyone here tonight, I have no idea why I'm up here at all. <laughs> See, I'm a bit of the black sheep in our family, a kid who chose a career neither in education nor public service, but one in television. And not even public television at that. <laughs> Listen to the sound of the genuine within yourself and others, my mother wrote, once wrote. It's a testament to her that she encouraged me to do just that. Never work for just money or power. Be honest. Don't feel entitled to anything you don't sweat and struggle for. Always finish what you start. I thank everybody here for all of your support over so many years. There's so many wonderful former board members um, and current board members and former staff. And I'm just so grateful for all the many things that they're doing. And I'm very proud of all of you. And I'm so grateful for all of you who donated and kept us afloat for many, many, many years. I thought we would be out of business by now. I thought if we told everybody that it was the right thing to do for children and what the cost-effective thing to do for children, that um, they'd do it. Well, it's not so easy for a voteless, voiceless group of people, but they're going to determine the future of this nation. And we've got to get our nation to get it. And you heard Angela and Jeff and their moving comments, but the greatest threat to America's national security and military security and economic security does not come from any enemy without it. It's coming from our failure to invest in our children. If we can't be taking care of our children, if we can't be helping parents and families do what they need to do to take care of their children, then we put our economic uh, and social 
uh, systems at risk because we're not doing the most important job that any society must do, and that is raising the next generation successfully. She's just very smart and very um, eager to figure out what's going to work. After I graduated from uh, Yale Law School in 1973, I went to work for um, the Children's Defense Fund. I was part of this great effort to gather information about children out of school, and it, to this day, uh, remains one of my most favorite um, public service projects I've ever done. Looked everywhere I could possibly look and found uh, a paid stipend uh, for the Law Student Civil Rights Research Council internship. And off I went for my first experience working for Marion. And we've heard a lot about the example that Marion has set the passion that she brings to her work and inspires in so many of us. But I want to add that she also really looked at the evidence. She never was unprepared. She knew that if we were to make a case on behalf of the children of our country, we had to have our facts straight. We had to know exactly what was going on in order to be advocates and agents of change. Let it go. Show up. 